Welcome to One on One. I'm Greg Bassett, your host from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper. My favorite show of the year is here. Jackie Jennings from the Clue Caper. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. No pressure there. It's my at favorite all. show of the year. Well, that's fun. We can just sit here and chat. We can just it's chat fun. All day long. I, we got to catch up. When I see this coming up on the calendar, it's like Christmas for me. I love this show. I love this show too. No, not this this show, not the show, but this episode. Well, I love the show where and you're this on. episode. Thank you, thank you. So tell me, Clue Caper is coming up. It's a little bit later this year. It is later this year. So, so there's going to be yeah. a lot of warning here for people, which is good. Which is very good. So Easter is late this year, so we pushed the Clue Caper back a week. So it's April 23rd this year. Um, and a little bit of a difference. We're going to start to end end at Headquarters Live. Wow. This year instead of it's at the It's always a of secret where you end. It, sometimes it's a secret where we, sometimes <laughs> it's a secret to me where we end. No, so we will start and end at uh, at headquarters live. All right, let's do year. let's do the the basic the stuff. Down. What is the clue caper? All right, so the clue caper is a massive scavenger hunt throughout. And it's massive. It is massive throughout Wicomico County, right? So you'll get puzzles, you'll have tasks that you have to do, you'll have to find your way around um, historical landmarks, local businesses. Nothing is off the table for the clue caper. Um, so we will uh, register teams. You show up on the 23rd and we'll give you a clue book, which has all of the information you need to solve the clues. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it, right? Or it allows you to access the information somewhere else, exactly. perhaps. Okay. Perhaps. Yeah. So you work with your team. You can have two people which is on your a team. Disaster. <laughs> five people on your team. Is there a max? Uh, five people. Okay. Um, we'll do six every once in a while. Just you know, let me know. We we recommend that husband husbands and wives do, do not, not wallpaper play the game or play the together. Paper together. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But it's good for groups of friends. It's good for coworkers. It's good team building exercise. Team building, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very good. Divorce court is filled on Monday. Well, the day after it gets a little bit ugly. Yeah. yeah. Um, no. So we'll give you a clue book, and you have to one. You have to find the clues in the clue book because they are well hidden sometimes. <laughs> Then you have to solve the clue with your team. Then you have to go to the location, right? The clue will direct you to a location. Uh, you have to go there. Once you get there, you have to do something sometimes. Some um, kind of physical. Right. So you may have to canoe across the pond, or you may have to eat food until you find a secret object hidden in a cake. Or one year you had to make a video here at Pack 14. One year you had to make a video at Pack 14, right. You might have to do a radio spot. You, so any, anything that we can think of, you may have to do. So once you do that, you get a stamp to prove that you've been to that location. Um, then you move on to your next clue. And the team that solves the most clues, uh, completes the most activities in a three-hour window, wins $1,000. Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars for the team, and a thousand dollars to donate to the charity of their choice. And you wanted to give it back to the Village of Hope. You know, it's it's interesting because the first couple of years, the no teams, one does. No, well, no, yeah, the first couple of teams <laughs> didn't, and then for the last four years, I think people have all given it back to the Village of Hope, okay. which is not what we intended at all. So I may make a rule this year that you have to give it to some other charity because we really want. You know, to promote lots non of nonprofits involved. Right. We know it's hard to raise money. We are. We know there are so many good causes here on the shore that we do want. You know, we do want people to give back to the to the nonprofit that's near and dear to their heart. Now we haven't said that yet. This is a mm -hmm. fundraiser for the Village of Hope. Fundraiser for the Village of Hope. Um, the Village of Hope is a transitional home for women and children here in Salisbury. Uh, 26 years now. One of the great things we have. It really is, and and it's great because um, it, it's sustainable, right? So we bring women in, we put them in a two-year program, and we really try to get them through all of the issues that they have that that created this homeless situation. It's not a to hotel. Begin with. It's a it's learning a exercise. And and I say a lot that it, it's not a crisis shelter. Um, we, we work with the crisis shelters to identify women who may do well in our program. Um, so absolutely, you know, Life Crisis and, and Diakonia and these crisis shelters do a great job of, of getting these women in and getting things stabilized. And then we're able to take them for the, in this two-year program uh, and really lay a foundation um, of education and parenting and health care um, and get them to a point where they won't lapse back into homelessness again. How many people over there? We have 14 apartments right now. Right. Um, so, so run Lake Street. 
it's over on Lake Street, right? So 14 women. Um, Beautiful little facility. It really is. Yeah. It's right on the lake. It's 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 really nice. Yeah. Um, lots of kids right now, um, ranging in age from infants to young teenagers. Um, and we hear a lot. It's interesting now that the village um, has 26 years behind it. It's a lot of the children who who live there, you know, 20, 24 years ago, are adults now and come back and say, "Wow." This saved my life. Yeah. You know, this really helped. So um, it's good to see that progression. Right. Now, you're someone um, fairly influential in the community, you would argue, but you are. You could pick any nonprofit to sort of get behind. Why Village of Hope? Um, you know, I, I think because anytime you can empower women, it's a good thing, right? Um, That's what my wife always said. Well, there you go. <laughs> My mom said that too. It, it's funny because the Village of Hope actually My started... My father never said that. <laughs> <laughs> the Village of Hope started as a shelter for men. Um, and, and what they found, you know, 24, 25 years ago was that um, you, you almost do more good when you can empower women to, to take care of themselves and take care of their children. Not to say that we don't want to take care of men. We, of course we do. Um, but women tend to, you know, lapse back into into homelessness, and and they have kids, and the idea of women, you know, living in their cars with children was is unacceptable. Yeah, I mean, the social fabric we grew up in empowered women; it was just a given. But that's not true across the full spectrum. Right. Exactly. So it has exactly. to be learned, you know, in, in some cases. Yeah, and and I think if you really think about, you know, any parent out there, when you think. You, you take for granted that you come home and you, you, you tuck your kids into bed at night. Um, you take for granted that they have a place to do their homework. You take for granted that they have breakfast on the table. Um, if you're homeless, you can't take any of that for granted. So you can't do well at school if you're doing homework in your car, right? You can't do well at school if you're worried about where you're going to sleep that night. You can't show up for your job if you're, I mean, there's just so many layer upon layer upon layer of, of issues. Um, and if we can address even half of those, you know, we're in a much better place. I got to host the We Love, We Heart Salisbury Awards mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and the JCs won for the nonprofit. And of course, the Salisbury JCs are famous for all that they do. They are. From the Christmas parade to the shopping to the, the uh, Halloween thing. I mean, there's just a million things that they do. There's even more that people don't know about. So on their little resume of all their successes, mm -hmm. Um, they all these gr really great significant things but at the end the one they were proudest of is yeah. their consistent performance <laughs> in the clue caper they are so proud that they pr participate very well in the clue caper if they want it or they're always they right did. there they won in year okay. two all right they won in year two but they're always right there um, they're always right there they're a great team they're a fun team they yeah. raise a ton of money and it's you know and it's so interesting because they you know they do so much for the community and yet they take time out yeah. to raise money for us and participate in the clue caper. Yeah. So a couple of things there. One, we love when nonprofits participate because any networking you can do with other nonprofits is always, always a good thing, right? Um, but number two, we love people that come, that come back to this event year after year. Um, I, I mean, I guess that means they're having fun and we're doing something right. So Well, you hear them every great. year, like the ones that fifth, sixth, seventh, something went wrong, some one person failed at a crucial moment, you know, they're beating them up, doing a code red on them, but they all say... We're coming back next year. Absolutely. Because it's, it's, yeah. And we've, we've created rivalries now. So this is yeah. the eighth year for yeah. the event, which is insane, right? Um, yeah, so you were just going to do this for a couple years. I was going to do it for a couple years. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Right, yeah. So we've been doing this since my daughter was three. Um, so my kids grew up with it. But, but, but there are rivalries now and teams that come back year after year just so they can beat this other team, right? Or just so they can get five spots ahead of where they were last year so it's it's so much fun to watch it's so much fun to and so much fun to do right how much to enter twenty five dollars to enter per person so uh, you can register at greatcluecaper.com um, twenty five dollars so that gets you into the race uh, we give you a goodie bag at the beginning you do the race and then we have a party at the end at headquarters live some very intriguing puzzles every year <laughs> Um, I remember last year you yeah. called me to find out about a park down near Eden that I'd never heard of. But then after, and you incorporated it, and right. afterward I heard, um, I was actually down at a, a, a breakfast thing in Allen, mm -hmm. and people were so happy that you, I don't know if I've told you this, that they were so happy that you incorporated their park in the clue caper, 
and gave them some sort of oh, like some, some fame. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's like little things that help you learn about the county. Even. Well, first of all, right, there's a, I've been here for 20 years. There are things in this county that I've never seen before. So it's so much fun. I'll take a Saturday afternoon and just drive around, right, down roads that I've never been down. And you find there are monuments everywhere and historical markers and parks that I've never seen before um, and just really cool, interesting buildings and landmarks. and. So I love to incorporate all of that because if you can teach people something, right? Yeah. Even better. Um, but then the puzzle part is fascinating to me. So I have a committee of five people, and we and we actually have a meeting tonight, and we sit at my dining room table and. Is there just, drinking at this meeting? There might be a little bit, <laughs> yeah. Um, and we sit at my dining room table. <laughs> And just figure out, you know, how we can drive people insane. So <laughs> it's, it's really fun. And the, the most interesting thing is, uh, you know, we'll all create clues and we'll bring them to, to the meeting and pass them out. And it's fascinating how different people's brains work. Right. So, I, you know, I might not get the answer for three weeks and you might get it right away or something clicks yeah. for you based on, you know, something you've read in your life and it doesn't work for me. The problem is, is the clue committee now is might be getting up in age a little bit and so, <laughs> so we so, don't quite have this so like millennial millennials. <laughs> like pop culture references yeah. so I, I need to work on, on getting some younger people on the committee yeah anyone ever tell you it's just too darn hard um no I mean we you you want people to have kind of that brain rush of success right so we make a couple of them easy so everybody's like oh yeah here we go <laughs> And then we make some of them really hard. But, yeah. re but really, it depends on, you know, I I'm a big puzzle game Scrabble person. So a lot of the clues that I come up with are wordplay. Um, we do a lot of Photoshopping clues, right? You were the victim of I that one year. I was in the year. book, yes. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was funny because my daughter actually, it, it, she actually decided that I might be a legitimate person based on my appearance as in a the clue. clue book. Yeah. yeah, so you never yeah. know what you're going to find yeah. in there. And, well, you, and you turned it into this site was the home this of... This site was the... One of the one signers of, of the Declaration of Independence, right, and right. We, I sh we should know this. Yeah. Well, and, and the <laughs> scary part with that year was there used to be a marker right outside, right, remember? Right. So between the, we, we do a pre-party every year, so we'll, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, between the pre-party and the actual clue caper, they moved the marker <laughs> to Somerset County. So the books had already been printed, right? The clue was already ready, and I had to say, oops. So there's a, there's a huge kind of human factor here right. and and sometimes people come back and complain and say you know that didn't work and I said it's it's the nature of the game I mean sometimes things happen I remember the first year you incorporated downtown and that mm -hmm. was so terrific because so many of these events don't didn't then think of downtown and your event was downtown and I, I remember being down there and looking downtown that was the first sort of moment where I was like you know we have a cool downtown I'd forgotten how cool it was and now downtown's taken off Every, yeah. You know, it's the flavor of the decade or whatever. Absolutely. Um, and again, this year you're going to be downtown, which is good. We are going to be downtown um, for a couple of things. So we're going to start at Headquarters Live. Um, and, and start means we, we gather everyone uh, starting at 1130. You register. We give you your wristband. We give you your clue book. Um, it's just kind of a chance for people to gather and get ready because we want to start you off at the same time. Um, and then we'll come back this year to Headquarters Live for the party. But we are also doing our pre-party, which we do a couple weeks before the clue paper for all the teams to kind of come and do some smack talk, right? All right. Um, we're going to do that at Rody Joe's this year. Oh, good. On okay. April 4th. So, so that'll, that'll be downtown, be too. Thing too. And there, every year there's a lecture either from Chief Duncan or Sheriff Lewis. Yes, because safety first. Safety first. the clue caper, right? No speeding, no driving recklessly. Um, we do let the Sheriff's Department and the Salisbury Police Department uh, know ahead of time where the clues are <laughs> in case they want to, you know, stake, stake out, out any speeders. <laughs> we have had people get tickets from the really? clue paper. Really? Yes. We have. Wow. We have. We have. Um, one point I wanted to make that you haven't asked yet, but okay. I know you were about to. I'm sure I was. Um, is the, so the teams, the, the incentive for the teams to raise money for us is where they get to start in That's the race. right. The pre thing. Right. Right. So they register now, greatcluecaper.com. Um, you register now, and we have, uh, we're, we, we've teamed with First Giving, which is an online fundraising site, to raise money. So you start to raise money for your team online or offline. Um, and the team that raises the most money gets to start first. So every year we have a group called the Nutty Professors who raise thousands of dollars 
for the Village of Hope. Are they from SU? They might be. <laughs> <laughs> and you and yes. Um, and, and so they get to start first. So they get their clue book first. So they get that head start. And then the team that raises the second most money goes second and third until, until we get gotten through the thing. So there is some incentive. Um, there are also some, some benchmarks. So if you raise more than um, $150, you get an extra clue book. So that's really important because you can be figuring clues in the front seat and the back seat of the car, right? Wow. So you get an extra clue book. If you raise a little bit more money, you get a fast pass, which means if you show up um, somewhere where you have to complete a task, you don't have to wait in line. You can go to the front of the line to complete the task. If, like if Disney World. Right? Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then if you raise enough money, if you raise $1,000, you get to skip a clue and still get credit for it. And that really comes into play at the end if you just don't have time to get to a location or you just can't solve this puzzle, um, you get credit for it anyways. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of variables. Uh, there's also a big loser award? Um, we do give a most clueless <laughs> award, yes. And <laughs> so I would immediately be eligible for no, that. Well, that's just based on, you know, it's, it's fun. We have, we have, our board at the Village of Hope is fantastic and they donate a ton of gift cards and prizes um, and, you know, bottles of wine and restaurant gift certificates. Um, and so we, we give out a ton of prizes at the end. So the first place winner gets the $1,000 plus the $1,000 for the charity of their choice. But we also give out prizes for the best dressed team. Right. Um, the team with the best name. And we have some really good names this year. Some of them I can't print in the paper, which is a problem. Well, but. That's, yeah, that's true. We have um, a lot of um, presidential inspired names this year. We'll good. Just, we'll just leave it at that. Um, uh, yeah, team spirit. The team with the best team spirit gets an award. And then, yeah, the most clueless team gets an award. So we give the awards out at the end. You get your check. You get your prize baskets. Um, have you, you thought about eat. adding like a, a betting thing where you can bet on a team? <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> because we keep saying that some year we're going we're gonna to have the technology to, to track them by GPS and then we can just have a whole bunch of people in a bar like watching a horse race. Right. Where we're just watching where people are going all right. over the county. I think that would be great. If there's any technology companies <laughs> out there, like GPS companies who want to help with that. That could that be cool. Be I mean, I'd love to bet on the teams. I'd bet on the JCs. It's you know. probably illegal. And it's Sunday. I don't think you can do any betting on Sunday it's in Sunday. Wakamaku County. Speaking of that, because mm -hmm. it's later this year, you're mm -hmm. going to have some better weather, hopefully. You've had some bad weather. No, we've had great yet weather every single year. The last two years have been bad. No, last year was cold, but it wasn't bad. It snowed. No, it snowed the weekend before. <laughs> That's the problem, is the last two years it has snowed the first weekend in April, um, and we're always the second weekend in April. So with Easter this year, we could have been the first weekend in April, and, and I'm just not confident that we're not going to get snow. But no, we have great weather every year. The the sisters at the Village of Hope pray for good weather. They pray for the weather? They do. They use, they use a prayer they, ship for they, that? Whatever it takes. Wow. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. pretty inspired. Yeah, that's good. So we've had great weather. So fingers crossed, right? We 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 plan for the worst, but, but we tend to get we tend to get good weather. All right. So you mentioned uh, the president's name perhaps being part of team names this year, which makes me immediately think of conspiracies. Oh, yeah. Um, and every now and then you'll hear a clue caper conspiracy because people can't believe that some people are so smart to understand these clues. There are lots of conspiracies. There's lots of underhanded cheating. <laughs> I would just like to say that, right? So People so, use their cell phones and things like well, that? Well, they're allowed to use their cell phones. So okay. we, we, you know, we try to counter-program against any technology that they might have, right? There are just some things you can't Google, by the way. Um, but they try to bribe my children. This is the biggest <laughs> conspiracy. Is that they pay my children for answers. So these are the teachers at Wicomico Day School? This is whoever, right? In the grocery store. And um, they always, they're always second, the teachers at Wicomico Day School. They, always, do, they do a really they good do job. A really job yeah, yeah. They do a great job. Um, but my kids have gotten smart now because they're like <laughs> preteens, right? And so um, two years ago, we had a team who literally paid my children for the answers. My children were smart enough to give them the wrong answers. <laughs> that's, that's lying. The, what? If you're taking a bribe, you're supposed to go through <laughs> with it, right? <laughs> and the team went to the wrong place, and and I and I it was brilliant. It sounds yeah. like a lawsuit to me. <laughs> you know, if you're trying, you can't make a contract with a 12-year-old. Did the kids donate the money back to the club? They did. Okay. I think they bought football cards or something. I don't. Know. Um, yeah. Don't bribe my children. Well, and you mentioned the police thing, and one of the police teams does well every year. Uh, well, you know, it's funny because the the JCs have won. Um, we have a, a team of. Uh, 
of policemen and women who have done well every year. But then we have like random teams who win. Um, last year we had a team called the Guardians of Salisbury who have been so close every year. And finally, everything just clicked for them. And they, you know, they were not only the first team in, but I think they had every clue solved. So you never know. You just never know. But it's great for, um, and we want to say it's, you know, we, we talk about some of these crazy things, but it's a great uh, activity for families. So we've had teenagers and their parents do this and young kids and their parents do this. Um, we've had much older people do this. So it, it, it is across the board. I mean, it's just fun for everyone. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, when you called last year about the park, um, and I was like, what's this for? And you were like, I'm not saying. So I knew it was Clue Caper <laughs> related, but I didn't know enough to tell anybody because it was completely, right. you know, dis, uh, and whatever that word is, disambiguous, yeah. dis, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but there was one year I knew I knew something. Did you? And I remember like walking around feeling like I was someone cool because yeah. I knew one of the clue sites. Well, and I have to be really careful now because so many people know about it that when I called to make these inquiries, and I made the mistake of emailing somebody the other day to ask a question, and he wrote back and he goes, "Is this a clue?" And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> curses! I forgot." So they yeah. didn't lie. Well, yeah. <laughs> But, but, you know, people are starting when the clue signs go out. People are, you know, they, they're looking around. They're trying to figure it out. Talk about that process. Under my, surveillance. My daughter is one of the ones that does the test every mm -hmm, year, mm -hmm. uh, and she, she loves that. Great. So talk about how you all test it. Uh, no, I can't talk about how we <laughs> test it. Well, you actually send volunteers out to We do. We, we send to, volunteers to out try with the, the route. clues. Yeah. Well, one, we want to know if the clues are solvable, but two... Um, we want to see the different places they might go. So we'll do it. We'll throw a couple um, teams in. And if they all go to different places or if they all come back mad, then we know we've done a really good job with the Clue Caper this year, right? Because <laughs> we want it to be fun. We want it to be challenging. Uh, but we do. I can't tell you when the test is, but your, well, your daughter knows. Well, that. last year I, I called her that day because mm -hmm. I wanted to see her and do something. She's like, no, we're doing Clue Caper. And so then I like waited like three hours and yeah. called her again. And she's like, we're still doing Clue Caper. It's really hard this year. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say um, this, you know, sometimes the tasks are hard. Sometimes the clues are hard. Sometimes the locations are kind of crazy. I think this year probably the clues will be the most challenging. Um, the tasks might be easier this year, but I think the clues will be challenging. Getting there is going to be difficult. So it's the journey. It's all about the journey. It's all about the journey. Yeah. So a tradition in this show, uh, going back to Phil Tillman, is the donning of the hats. Um, and I remember you used to do your own show for this event, and you wore the hats throughout the entire That's show. That's true. Yeah. But I think you get the Very hat now. Very distracting. And I have something extra for you this year, too. Now, if I should begin to die with this on, you'll take it off, right? Well. What movie is that from? I don't know. Arthur. It's from Arthur. That was before my time. Yeah. No, okay. it wasn't. Um, and I also brought you a, an extra present. Oh, the official thank you. Piedmont Airlines boxer shorts. Turn them around. Yeah. Fly Piedmont, right? Hashtag spot the boxers. Uh, so this, this is, is part, part of, of a our, theme. Our pilot recruiting. Yes. We so were looking pilots for wear these? <laughs> Maybe. Um, but yeah, we are actively recruiting pilots. And so, uh, yeah, we tried to think of something different and interesting. And so spot the boxers. There you go. Do you need a pilot's license? You, you do need a pilot's license, I'm afraid, yes. Now, you work for Piedmont out at our beautiful airport. Uh, how's things going out there with this? Things are great. So we just took delivery of our 18th jet uh, on Monday. So we're adding to the fleet pretty soon. By May, June, I think we will have more jets in the fleet than turboprops. Wow. So that's And they'll fly where? They will fly Philly and Charlotte. They're going to fly Philly? Uh, yes. Wow, okay. Cool. Yeah, so you'll see, you'll probably see a jet on a Salisbury route starting in the fall. So there's some exciting news right there. Well, someone told me there's a bunch of old planes sort of piled up together somewhere. I need uh, to go take a picture. Yeah, we're retiring the turboprops okay. right now. So we ha we do have them parked off the uh, off the side of the airport there. Um, but C can the I jet go get a picture of that? Growing. Absolutely. I'll, okay. Yeah, I'll take you out there. Um, well, the FAA has me banned and for a lot of things, but. Maybe maybe I can get off the list. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. And we're going to have your new boss, uh, Steve, is gone. Um, Steve Farrow retired. Steve Farrow retired. May. Yes, Lyle uh, Hogg is Dick Hansen's new nephew. CEO. And Lyle right. Hogg is the new CEO. We're going to have him on here to talk about Piedmont at some point. Yeah, he's fantastic. And he'll talk about um, growing the airport and growing the company. And we're in a really good place. Lots of job openings, too. So apply yeah, to Piedmont. You keep saying that. Apply to Piedmont. That's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And a new airport director who I know you're excited about. Everyone's excited. I've yet to meet her. Yeah, you have to meet her. She has great ideas. Um, we're working with her, uh, and, and I, I expect to see really great things coming up here in the next 
couple of years. Cool. Another one of the great jewels we have in our county is this, that airport. And underused, yes. And Piedmont is how big? 7,000 employees across the country. Here. No, not all headquartered okay. here, but headquartered in Salisbury, 7,000 employees yeah, but I across mean, the country. Right. Yeah, as far away as Alaska. Um, growing fleet of jets, huge customer service department. Uh, yeah, so come on board. Uh, and I have a little affiliation with United Way, and um, your contributions from your employees are amazing for United Way. And the jet pulling thing the, was another big success Yeah, this so year. we've always done the dash pull, right? We do it in five or six different locations, all of our maintenance spaces across the country. Uh, we pull an airplane. We raise money. So this year, with the, we're retiring the turboprops, the dashes, and uh, so we'll have to have a jet pull, I think, this year. We'll invite you out. You can have a team. Those dashes, so when they vibrate, there's a, mm -hmm. like they do something with the fillings in my teeth. I'm really going to oh, miss that. I love them. <laughs> I sleep on that plane so well. Yeah, I'm going to really. It's got a vibration. It's fantastic. It's got a vibration thing. All right, when's the clue caper again? Let's wrap the clue caper information up. Sunday, People, April twenty-third. People, you, you've got to try this thing once, even if you don't participate. Just go to the, can you go to the party if you don't participate? You can go to the party, okay. yeah, you can buy tickets, but we really want people to participate. Yeah. So April 23rd, re you have to register now, so register online at greatcluecaper.com. $25 a person, raises money for a great, great cause, and you'll have a great time. And any opportunity to go to Headquarters Live... Is a good thing. It's fun. It's a good thing. It's just fun. Absolutely. She's Jackie Jennings. She's in charge of the Clue Caper, again, her eighth year. Yep. Hard to believe, coming up on April 23rd, and we're thrilled to have her here today on 101. Thanks for having me. I'm Greg Bassett from the Salisbury Independent Newspaper, another edition of 101 right here on PAC 14. First Shore Federal is proud to support PAC-14 and one-on-one. -on -one. We'd encourage every business to support PAC-14 and, and pick a program and support it and let's make a difference.